Hello, my name is Shelby and I run a small pottery business in Australia. This is my December vlog. In this vlog, I take you with me through the preparation and logistics of getting ready for one of my biggest market events of the year. I take you with me to the market in Sydney, which is 10 hours away from my home address. I go on national live television to do pottery and then I come home and share the results of how I went at the market and wrap up the year with you on YouTube. So let's get into it by jumping into a calming ASMR kiln pack before all the chaos. very very tired <laughs> let's open this kiln up together i know i don't need to disclose that i'm tired this time of the year is always so full on just with christmas there's just a lot going on <laughs> and to top it off there's all these other things that are happening behind the scenes for a collaboration i'm working on i'm getting calls from interviews and stuff so let's go through this kiln and repack it together <laughs> we've like the lowest range of my personality you'll ever probably see. They look amazing the colors. <laughs> I sound so flat, but I'm very happy. <laughs> the colors look great. I'm very excited. I wanted to test this one one more time. I'm very happy with that result. We had some issues with the handles cracking, but I'm, I'm stoked with that. That looks great. Our wombats, our big wombats tend to crack on the side of the ear, so I'm just going to check those. That one looks good. Glaze is perfect. The glaze couldn't be better. Like, oh, I'm just so wrapped with how perfect this glaze is. Oh, whew. like, look at that. That is just popping. Bounces off it. It just feels complete. It feels lovely. These are some of the best glazed Aussie animals we have done in such a long time. I've had a lot of handle cracking so far. That one's good. This makes doing pottery worth it. When the glaze just, oh my goodness, gobsmacked. These are just amazing. I'm going to do a little Instagram story. Whoop. <laughs> Hello, love. I would love a coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. See you soon. Bye. This is my hardest choice of the day, I think. Oh, yeah. We'll do like a video like that. Should I put a filter on it? No, it doesn't need a filter. It's beautiful. You're beautiful, you don't need a filter, although that one's quite nice. No, it doesn't change the colors too much, it just puts like a nice airiness on it, I reckon. Yep, 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 yep. Um, and I should put a little reminder, because people need like a hundred reminders that you're going to be somewhere. I feel like that's a cute one. We're good? Yeah, lovely. I love all these, they're nice. <gasps> that was scary. Nice. I love this little thimble, it's so cute. Not one has disappointed me yet. I don't think they will. But they're great. They're just so great. Good morning, Funky. Good morning. I got you some socks. Thank you. Another beautiful day. Very happy with that colorway. That's very summery, very spring. I love that. Wow. <gasps> no, you didn't betray me like that, did you? You did, you little bugger. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, that would be from trimming, I reckon. That's okay. That one still, it functions really great. And if you had a dried flower bouquet and had a trip over there, you wouldn't even see it. Um, that one we sell discounted, but that's okay. It looks like the rest are perfect. And I feel like we had to have one sacrifice given the whole kill node has been impeccable. No cracks, that's great. Oh my gosh, the colors are amazing. Beautiful, stunning, we're happy. I've got maybe two more glaze fires to go. I want to put one more bisque on and then it's going to be packing, logistics, planning, 
which we're going to have a chat about today and tomorrow with the girls to figure out how we're best going to work as a team for that. And then oh, they're here. I'm actually going to film the table and see their reactions while I finish work because they haven't seen them yet because I fired them over the weekend. She's coming. They're both coming. They're both here. How are we this morning? Wow. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> Uh, you can see the crispness. Yeah, like it's just, it pops. Oh, that painting was <laughs> worth something. <laughs> that painstaking. Like, totally. I like that one actually, that one's, that's really nice. The mustard. Oh, the mustard, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that looks so much more orange. She had to be, they look good. There was only one that cracked. Cracked. The koala there. Ah. Which may be oh. due to a couple of reasons, but. Like the yeah, but that's okay. I, I treated it as the sacrifice for a a couple of kill modes of really great stuff. Ashton was just so suspicious of why I was filming the reactions, but I just wanted to see what she says because usually she's really like excited and happy and she's like, oh my gosh, look what we did together and look how we glazed them and everything. And for some reason, I think just telling her that I was filming put her off and she was just like, why are you filming? <laughs> I always wanna make sure that they know that I'm filming and that they consent to me filming them or their reactions. And and in this moment, <laughs> consenting also sort of changed her reaction. I probably should have asked her afterwards and said, I just filmed that. Would you be okay if I posted it? So I'll, I'll know to do that next time. We are doing another test run through of the market. This is for a number of reasons. There is a bigger stall. So this time instead of the two meter by two meter, I've got a three meter by two meter. And that means that there's a bit more frontage. So I have to figure out what to go in that space, but they also want to have more browsing space because last Last time a lot of people couldn't really see everything so I want a bit more on display at the front so people can kind of like pick through stuff. On that note we also have new people so Emily's going to be joining us at this market and so it was good to do a test run through so that when we're at the event Emily knows exactly what to do we know where everything is we're making sure that we've packed everything so yeah that's why we did another test run through and I'm gonna say it is working out a lot better this time. I also have a new backdrop because I hated the plain white one and this one is made from vintage tea towels that I stitched together. We have started packing for the market. I have had my big collaboration with Greyvox and Vinnie's Go Live. And so I've had a number of interviews. Like I went into ABC Radio yesterday and did an interview live on air. I have another TV crew coming out today to do an interview. And then there's one this afternoon. And then I'm potentially getting flown to go on live Australian TV. Like... It's a lot and I'm, I'm very nervous about that. I, I'm good at filming here because there's no audience and there's no one around and I can edit it and snip it together to be what I want it to be and so it's nice and concise because I'm a bit of a waffler. But being on live TV is a whole different kettle of fish. <laughs> they want me to wheel throw on live TV as well. So I don't know how that's going to go. Having a conversation with people whilst trying to concentrate on what I'm doing. It's going to be the wobbliest pot I've ever made. So the mission today is because I've got the TV crew coming, I want to move out all the stuff we have packed. So I just need to clean up the whole studio again. I don't know how this market's gonna go. I I have no idea. The first one in Melbourne was amazing and it exceeded all expectations and left me crying. And I probably might cry again. I don't know, we'll see. I'm also aware that I, I have no idea whether people are seeing the videos, whether they know that I'm coming to Sydney, whether I have a fan base in Sydney. So I knew I definitely had one in Victoria, but to go to New South Wales is a whole different thing. But yeah, I'm feeling excited but nervous. I just realized I feel that whole show and I've still got my watch band my <laughs> on my face <laughs> from sleeping on my wrist. <laughs> oh, sorry, the lights flicker. It's very dark in here. I can't see without the lights on. I got distracted writing a list and they're going to be here in 10 minutes. So I'm actually going to move. <laughs> I'm going to move all the stuff and like tuck it in the shelf because I don't have time to move it all into the house. So... <laughs> I am going to quickly do, I'm going to get red in the face before my interview, but I'm going to quickly try and get as much of this out as possible.
After I had all my interviews for that collaboration, it was time to get straight back into packing everything and getting everything in their tubs. This system worked really well last time was packing them in the tubs and then adding the little labels and just trying to pack everything together. Like when there were sorts of things to put them all together in the same box, just so that it was easy to find and we could unpack it all together and put it together on the table. Just found that setting up the table this market with everything in its collective was was a lot better whilst also still merchandising it so it looked really pretty it was just yeah I just think it worked a lot better and it just made it a little bit less overwhelming because it is a lot to look at and there's a lot of color and there's lots of different types of things that I make and create especially because of the mystery molds it used to just be my Aussie animal pots and now it's just like mugs plates figurines trinkets dishes all these different types of things and all different types of genres of niches and all kinds of stuff we made sure to price everything before it went into the tubs just so that it was all ready to go and I stock took everything stock taped stock took I don't know which is the right way but I stock taped everything and popped it on that square which was such a game changer because we were also able to check when things were sold out in the moment especially when people ask for stuff and because there were so many of us we couldn't keep as much track of it it, and I could not recommend that square system highly enough, especially if you use it properly. It is just so good. Is that not the coolest load of color you have ever seen? Look at all the floral frogs and then these little planters. Oh, whoops, forgot to sponge that one. Look at that. That is so cool. And all these little mushies, they look amazing. These all look so great. Look, so cute. I'm so, so excited. These are just gonna look amazing on the table at the market. So the last kiln load is packed. It is on the gravy boat collaboration I am working on. Just so happened to get a lot of media attention, which is what you hope for. But I am shocked because we got a spot on national morning TV here in Australia called Sunrise. And it's live. So many creators dream of going on live TV and sharing about their art and sharing about their craft and what they do. But I am literally pooping my pants. I've just got to do what I usually do, but it's alive. I don't know how I'm going to go. They want me to take up some of my best works and showcase those. I don't know what my best works are. I'm going to show you what I picked and I, you're not going to be able to help me, but <laughs> I want to show you what I picked. These two guys, because they're like Aussie animals. They are what I'm known for. I've got like a a mug. I've got a hypnotoad because they're very popular, very famous, very intricate. I've got one of these guys because they're so popular. Sunflowers because the height and it's just very striking. Like this is what I've got so far. I'm just scared to take too much because, oh jeez, um, because I don't want to have to carry it on the plane and like I've only got like my carry-on luggage. I am flying in and flying back which is like so, there's the butter dish. I feel like the teapot needs to come. I feel like it's one of my best works ever. <laughs> got to the airport and all the flights got canceled because of the storm and no one can offer me an early flight and the earliest flight is gonna get me right when I'm meant to be on live TV. And so they had to cancel. I'm like devastated. <laughs> What an ordeal that was. I am back home and I wasn't going to work today at all, but I think what I'll do is unpack this last kiln load because 
I only have one more kiln load to go and I'd probably rather get everything through so that we can sand it, price it, pack it. Oh my gosh, I was so upset. It was just really tricky. What happened was I checked into my flight the night before. I rocked up to the airport, scanned my boarding pass and it was like seek assistance. And I was like, oh, that's weird. So I was just like, oh, I'll type in my ticket and all of that and it was like, cancelled and I full went into panic mode. I was like, can you re reschedule my flight? And they were like, oh, well, we booked you on an 11 a.m. flight. Turns out she's looking at my return flight, big stuff up. And then I was like, can you please, please put me on the 7 a.m. flight, please? And they'd oversold it. And I was like, is there any way you can swap people over? And it was just, there, there was no budging. They pretty much told me to walk around the airport and find another airline service that could potentially get me there soon enough. Just to really, interesting experience and because I'm so tired there was so much anxiety and like worry and nerves just with flying alone on top of going on national TV and sharing my pottery and talking to people I don't know was very very overwhelming and as soon as I got the we've cancelled it I just cried I just cried and I was just like oh my gosh like what am I doing this is such a weird thing, but people call it the burnt toast thing is that you wake up in the morning, you're getting ready for work and you burn your slice of toast. And so you end up being late for work because you're remaking your slice of toast. But in that time, you've missed out on having a car accident or something really horrible happening to you. And so I was just like, look, this is a burnt toast moment. And I think I just wasn't meant to be on that plane because for whatever reason, something was looking out for me. I really, really wanted to do the opportunity and it was such a momentous thing for my career to go on the show they are hopefully going to reschedule it for next weekend which will be the sunday of the market okay it's time to open the last kiln of the year oh, rude so here is the last kill node and I didn't really have much time to really reflect on it being the last kill node and to take it all in because I had to get everything packed. Here is a quick little look-see at all of the rest of the stuff that was going in. There was so much. There was so much. I was trying to photograph everything as I went. I pretty much did. It was just I got to a point where I was like I'm not counting. <laughs> I'm not counting anymore for this. I counted on my stock take and that was about it. And then it was time to pack the car with all these boxes boxes and I'm not gonna lie I was worried it was not going to fit but it was it worked out so well <coughs> gonna leave this one like this for now and then we're gonna pack the other one so that it kind of balanced across the two cars just so we can all see in the rearview mirror and stuff, but I think we could go a lot full up, but we'll just, yeah, we'll just see what happens with that car. If you guys didn't know this already, I love to put a lot of stress and pressure on myself to get things done and decided to make some last minute signs. I wanted to make these signs to enhance my little setup because I'm gonna have a little section that's gonna have painter and pottery kits and the whoopsie daisy section, which is all the seconds pieces. Because I have a bit more space, I did really wanna have signage around these just to sort of like give them a bit of difference on the stall and also to really highlight what the boxes are because the paint your own pottery kits are in boxes so it's hard to know what they actually Actually are other than a pretty little box so I wanted to do signs that yeah said paint your own pottery kits and one that said whoopsie daisies to differentiate the spaces in the stall setup and to also just grab people and just be a bit more of a display I did this by using my old tint paint tins from when I did my studio fit out and then I pretty much just traced the text on them and outlined it all don't they look cool like very rushed for the last minute but I finally finished them it's four o'clock and I leave tomorrow and they're all dry and ready to go. I'm so excited, they look so cute. Oh my gosh, I'm so, so nervous. Yeah, I don't know, I just feel so ew. You know, like butterflies in my tummy, it's all ready to go. You saw us packing this car yesterday. I finished packing the other car yesterday as well. There's a few little bits just to go in, which is some last minute things like road trip snacks <laughs> and our bags, our personal belongings. But other than that's done.
we're here. <laughs> it was finally bump in time and it is so loud and chaotic during bump in. So I didn't vlog much other than doing my time lapses. Although even though my tripod was in my stall space and behind my stuff, someone knocked it over and then didn't put it up properly and then knocked it over again. I don't, I don't even know how it happened. I turned around and I was like, what? Who knocked over my camera? It was like in my stuff. <laughs> So wild. Anyway, this is why I can never shoot content when I'm out because people just like, I don't know, people be peopling. Anyway, this was what I could capture of the time lapse and I took some shots on my phone as well to show you just like little stages of getting ready and setting it all up. It was a really teamwork makes the dream work type of situation and on top of that because we had so much pottery it literally took us four hours to unwrap everything. We not only unwrapped everything but we rolled up all the bubble wrap into rolls so that we could easily grab it out to pack up other people's orders if they were going a distance and wanted a bit of bubble wrap but also so that when we pack down we've got it all ready and sized so we can pack down really quickly from there the market opened and here's some shots that the beautiful sammy visuals took for me when she came in there was a huge line every single day for most of the day this was at the end of the evening on friday when it had quietened down but it was intense and i'm so so grateful for every single one of you that came here was the little line that they put in place they had security guards again it was just oh it was amazing thank you for showing up the stall just looked so amazing with all the colors and it just was so incredible to see all of this work on display for you guys to look at purchase and enjoy i can't do it i can't do the public thing <laughs> okay it's been so busy i am just walking back to my hotel after getting some dinner after day two it has just been so intense <laughs> it's been so amazing i i have gotten the girls all ready to go because i am actually going on live tv tomorrow on sunrise which is like a morning show <sighs> i am so nervous but i'm so excited it's going to be really good <laughs> Hello. yeah anyway so <laughs> now the wind's died down again um yeah so thank you was amazing we pretty much sold the same amount as we did in melbourne but we've got so much left because we made so much more and i'd rather have more there so that we can make more sales and make sure everyone gets pieces than not make enough because it was hard to say i'm sorry to people that missed out so i'm i'm feeling very good like a few people were like oh you're not gonna sell out but i'm i'm glad i'm glad it means that pieces will go online hopefully but sunday hasn't happened yet so we'll see but yeah it's been great so far this was the most nerve-wracking Uber I ever took in my life. Was heading to the Seven Studio in Sydney. This was us getting all the pottery wheels out and then I went into the green room. I got my hair and makeup done. I mean, I pretty much did it myself. They just did like a tidy up of it. I feel pretty proud. It was pretty good. <laughs> and then we had to set up in the ad break and it was like quiet chaos. Everyone was like running around like little busy bees. And then it was time to do the little wheel throwing segment. It went so fast. I mean, the hosts were very intense people um, kudos to them because that's their job but I was just like very overwhelmed by their personalities <laughs> and it just got so out of hand very quickly and I felt like they had their own agenda at the end of the day I still got to get across a bit about the Grave Elks campaign and how we were helping those in need this Christmas through Vinnie's Australia but yeah it was um <laughs> it was an interesting experience being behind the scenes and seeing how they behaved as people and the way they treated their co-workers was very um interesting i then raced back to the market i should have taken some time but i think i was just so like oh my gosh i like that was so intense that i raced back to the market and then it was time to bump out it was a very very intense day like from getting up early going into a studio going on live tv and talking to people i didn't know and going through all these security clearances to then go to the market and see all you and then <laughs> to pack up the market it was just yeah it was a time bump down was just a process of wrapping everything up there was a lot to wrap up still so it took a long time and my friend Georgie came with her partner Joss and helped us as well to take stuff out to the car and everything but we got it all done we did it pretty quickly but because we were so tired we were just ready to get home but yeah I am I'm just so so proud of us I am so incredibly grateful 
and I just feel so special and so lucky to have your support. After the market, I didn't want to drive back home straight away because I wanted to rest. It's been a huge weekend. So I went out with my bestie to the beach and we had a bit of a day trip to Kuji. And then we went out for a big sort of celebration dinner where we went to Gigi's in Newtown and got dinner and dessert. It was so good. I just thought I'd share that bit because we, we had a little treat and then it was time to head home where I rested for a few days before the next part of unpacking. Okay, we're home physically and mentally exhausted but I want to unpack the car and get everything out and unpacked. I feel like I can't rest until that's done. gosh all the feelings and emotions I went in not really knowing how it was going to go going interstate going to a different location and having the same result and also kind of like always putting a little bit of pressure on myself to have the same result it went over to 4 p.m literally a group of you came running like barreling down the hallway like I saw you guys running it was wild and you came and you lined up and they hadn't put the line system in this time because again they weren't sure whether it was going to do the same thing and so the line just went around the building again and I couldn't believe it that you guys had showed up for me again but in a different state I was just like instantly had a cry but it wasn't like the mass market where I was like like, oh my gosh, what is happening? It was like, oh my gosh, thank you for doing this again. Like, thank you. Like, it was just this different feeling. I had that shock from the first one that was very emotional, but this one was just like, thank you for solidifying that for me. And thank you for supporting me. Thank you for watching my videos and wanting to own some of my work. It was more like rounded and more like clearer headspace. So it wasn't as like cryy and like I cried so many times the first market, but this time, I cried initially it was like oh my gosh thank god like thank gosh it was worth it like thank goodness it was worth the drive it was worth the effort it was worth paying to staff to come up and do the market it was just all that stress and pressure had just like instantly come off my shoulders I was able to take in those little moments of talking to you so much more this market because I was so mentally prepared for it took way more photos with you guys yeah it was amazing I'm gonna try and hold up the tears it is so such a big action and a massive way to show your support for me by showing up because it is so easy to watch a video and not engage with it at all to like a video to comment on a video to share a video like that stuff is all free you can do that on the comfort of your own couch but to physically go out of your way to go see someone and buy something from them that is mammoth like that is huge like i am just so appreciative of that and i always will be i 
I am always just expressing so much gratitude to you and it just means that I can keep doing this and I've got two staff members now and I can help keep them in a nice comfortable safe employment place it just it just means so much but to physically go to a location and buy pieces it's just it blows my mind like it's blowing my mind every time and I've only done two markets now but I hope that you get how grateful I am and like how thankful I am for you and for you supporting my work and supporting my business always which actually leads me to the next part which is the update on how we went at the market the aim of the market was not to sell out at a market it's really great when you sell out but it's also not a good thing and that's because when you sell out your store looks empty so people that have come later in the day that are wanting to purchase something or maybe didn't even know you existed can't actually see what you make and can't actually make a purchase so you end up losing sales when i sold out it was really amazing the first month because i was like oh my gosh like, this is amazing but then on sunday we were standing around with an empty table pretty much all day and there wasn't really anything to showcase who i was for potential opportunities so like if there was some person that was lurking in the crowd that's seeking out certain people for certain opportunities like they're not seeing the what I can offer they're not seeing my best work also the people that don't follow me and want to buy one of my pieces that are just discovering me at the market they're not seeing what I can truly do when you sell out at a market you're actually missing out on money and you're missing out on a business opportunity because you've sold out and you just you can't make any money if the table's empty so you're kind of wasting a day that you've paid for even though the market might have paid for itself you are sort of missing out on those sales if that makes sense with the business hat on we brought home so much stuff and it meant that our table and some of the shelves behind us could stay reasonably stocked up the whole weekend so it constantly looked beautiful and on display the thing is because we had so much stuff some things still did sell out so we still sold out of ducks we sold out of koalas we sold out of like a number of things and then we also only came back home with one item of certain designs for example like wattle pretty much sold out we've got like one jar one plate and one teacup and so that is an amazing result it is like pretty much almost a sellout of that design but that is to me a sellout it was incredibly successful and absolutely worth our time but because we over made stuff to make sure that the table stays stocked I'm also going to be able to have an online restock, which I'm so excited about because so many of you from interstate and international, I do ship overseas. So now you guys will be able to shop the restock. I felt like I was really neglecting all of you guys overseas that are wanting to support me. I felt like I wasn't putting enough on the website. And so by making more stuff, it has meant that I can now do the online restock as well, as well as putting my best foot forward for the whole weekend of the market. I will say that despite bringing more pieces home, we definitely made more money this market. It was incredible how much we made just by having that table stocked for that last day. Enough for me to finally bring my new staff member on for four days a week in the studio. Amazingly wonderful for us here because we can balance out what we do here and I can finally start to have some work-life balance because you guys don't see this but I work countless hours. I don't work a normal nine to five. I am always working. So it's nice to know that we, I can finally support staff so that it makes it more sustainable for me as well. I just want to say thank you. Cause um, without that, like, I don't know like what I was going to do in the new year. It just never feels like thank you is enough. And I just want to give you all hugs. And that's um, about all there is to it. I want to do two more things with this video. The first is I want to show you the other businesses I purchased from. So I wanted to show you what I got. I'll do that pretty quick this time because a few of you got a bit mad at me waffly <laughs> about all these small businesses. I just love all the small businesses. It's amazing and I love supporting them. So I'll do a quick overview of what I purchased. The other thing I want to do at the end of the video is a nice little wrap up for the year. Let's see what I bought and then we'll do the wrap up.
First up, we've got some plant-based chocolates. These go in our snack drawer in the studio. And this one even has seaweed in it. It's so interesting. It tastes amazing though. We have my creative who does black and white pottery and it's so fun and whimsical. These are from Pinched by Navina, Pinched on Instagram. And I have actually wanted some of their work for a long time. This time I really like these two. I thought they were really cool, very vibrant and fun. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that glaze in there. Chili from Bippy. I actually got the three pack in the different spice levels. I'm gonna re-gift these ones for some presents for people. Stray Leaves, who I saw on TikTok before the market. I got Sisu Tonic and the Magnesium Oil. I got those just for my health and guts. <laughs> on the note of health, I actually went to the Enki stall because my dermatitis flares up whenever I stop touching clay. These two out to help with my dermatitis to help ease that. And then I've also got this nice one for relaxation and just balancing myself out. So this is all plastic free packaging. It's all environmentally sustainable and it's plant based as well. And they also offer a number of flavors and the packaging's really cute as well. So I've got this vino which I'm giving to my best friend because she just came back from Europe and I just thought that it was a perfect little gift for her to put on the fruit. And then I've also got these little houses that I'm going to also give to my studio assistants but they've also got little incense holes and I just thought they were so cute. Look how tiny they are like a little village. One of my studio assistants went out and bought me this little cutie and I absolutely love it. It's so sweet. There was a potter that was also a very big inspiration when I was starting my pottery journey and that is Public Holiday and they sell out online so fast so I knew I had to get some pieces whilst I was there and could pick and choose pieces. I just like this one because it has a pink glaze. They have very eccentric handles and in different shapes. I'm just so glad that I finally have some of their work, especially because they inspired me so much early on. I met them. They came and bought some things from me and they gifted me this in exchange for something I gifted them. We have rubber dub, which is spice rubs and these are all using certain Australian native ingredients. I love like that they've got the Australian native animals and flora on them as well. On the spice train I also went to Spice Zen and they have amazing spice blends. This is Jinto Foods. So these are sauces. They are very flavorful and delicious. 3D printed and they designed this and I just love the shape and they had some really cool colors. I guess similar vibe I also got this one. I just think that that shape so cool how it's like asymmetrical and then I have these like little wax flowers in them and they look oh they look really cute. Bed sheets from Betty. I've actually been eyeing off Betty bed sheets for a long time. I'm actually sad. I should have got a quilt cover as well. I only got the sheets, so I've got to fit it in a top sheet. This is a latch hooking kit. I haven't done a latch hooking kit since I was a kid. This is a little design. And I wasn't going to get one for myself. And then they had all these pictures of cats that love these little rugs that you make. So I had to get one. The cats would like that design. <laughs> I picked it based on what the cats would like. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, and it's already got the backing on it ready to go. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so fun. What an awesome kit idea. This is the last thing I got and it's inside because it was a Christmas present to my partner. So it's from Dog Boy Knives and they upcycle or reuse old files and turn them into knives. He just really loves old tooling and to see it repurposed in this way, he just thought it was really cool. I cannot even begin to process the year we have had. I started the year off moving into my new studio. This feels like so long ago now. I feel like I've been in this studio for years. Without this studio, I wouldn't have been able to create the content I have been able to make for you. I wouldn't have been able to do the markets or the restocks to the level I have. I wouldn't have been able to hire staff. Thank you all so much for allowing me to grow with this space. After moving in, I introduced you to my new series, Smash Up Pass. Gosh, that was so so much fun i absolutely loved reading your reactions your laughter and your fun from this series i cannot wait to bring it back in 2024 i went on a road trip up to gari in queensland to introduce my dingo pot to their family dingo pots will be released in 2024 unfortunately due to supply issues i was unable to get this guy released this year but i hope to have them available in the new year with many new designs i vlogged a lot this was the first year i tried to do regular vlogs of behind the scenes i got a brand 
new kiln and gosh this also feels like I've always had it. I tried to finish 60 pieces a week for a few months for Craft Lab and my first finest keepers market. TikTok came to my studio which started a process of ads and billboards rolling out on television, movie cinemas and my head literally following you everywhere. I started the mystery molds again and missed all the fun we had together with these. I attended Craft Lab to show you my process and went to my first ever market and sold out. I purchased more mystery molds, I adopted two cats, I lost a kiln load of pottery but then saved most of it again. I created another advent calendar which sold out online and then attended my December market which you just watched. I am so grateful for you. This is all because of you. Your encouragement, interest, love for what I do is why I shared all of this with you. Your creativity, generosity and kindness has made this channel something I love to be a part of, a place I love to share like a family. I feel so supported. Whether you are a new follower or an old one, thank you for supporting me to live my dreams and allowing me to pursue my passion for creativity and pottery. I close the year with 360,000 of you here on YouTube. What a huge unfathomable number. I cannot wait to see what 2024 holds for us here. I would love to know what your favorite moments of 2023 were, what you would like to see more of in 2024, and I just hope I get to see more of you in the new year. Until then, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas, a wonderful new year, stay creative, and I will see you all in 2024.